Hello and welcome to Isle of History. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Today I'm going to do something a little different. I'm looking at both the history and the future of our oceans and in turn how we are all impacted by the vast amounts of plastic being cast aside which are ending up in our rivers and oceans and causing irreversible damage to not only our marine wildlife but to us as a species. And how much of an issue is this? Well, to get your attention, I'm going to give you a quick taster for how much plastic you eat. Yes, that's right, you do eat plastic. You also drink it and you also breathe it. And not by choice. So let me shock you with these figures and then have a think about how you can change or help to make a difference because no one can do this alone. We have to come together. The following data comes from PlasticOceans.org and again, I have left a link to them in the description. I thank them for the use of their infographics and I use them merely to build awareness. So as you can see, in one week we consume 5 grams of plastic, or the equivalent of a credit card. In a month we consume 21 grams, which is the same as a Lego brick. After a year you have taken on 250 grams, which is the same as a plastic dinner plate. Ten years from now you will have consumed what amounts to a life-saving ring. And in a lifetime, the average person consumes up to 40 pounds or 18 kilograms, which would equate to two large recycling bins. Now, I don't know about you, but that is shocking and certainly got my attention. And I can almost hear the question, how does plastic get into my diet? Take a look at this image and see for yourselves. The text is a bit small, so I'll read it out. There are two types of plankton, zooplankton, which are animals, and phytoplankton, which are plants. Zooplankton feed on phytoplankton, small fish feed on zooplankton, squid feed on small fish, and so it goes on up the food chain. Waterborne chemicals from decades of industry and agriculture attract to plastic like a magnet. When these plastics mix with plankton, they are eaten by fish and become part of the food chain. These toxins hitchhike on plastics. Different types of plastics attract toxins at different rates, making some more potent than others. Once ingested by fish, these toxins are released from the plastic fragments and are carried in the bloodstream and stored in the fatty tissues of the fish. These toxins have been linked with cancer, autoimmune disease, cognitive problems, infertility and endocrine disruption. We then eat these fish, causing the toxins to enter our bodies. So that is how plastics get into your diet. And as 60% of the world's population rely on fish, as its main source of protein, you can see how big of a problem this is. And that is just the plastic that we as humans take on through eating. What about marine wildlife? It was the 1960s when reports first started to emerge of seabirds ingesting plastics, with a report of some pachytillas being found to have ingested plastic in New Zealand. And there were many other reports that decade, with birds from puffins to seagulls, being found with large quantities of plastics and elastic in their stomachs. But even before that, in the 1950s, there were reports of sea turtles being found dead with plastic bags inside their stomachs, and as time went on, more and more stories were being told of animals becoming entangled in fishing nets and other plastic discarded into the water. And the reports that were on the increase began to mirror that of the rate in which plastic was being produced. Here is a graph showing the production levels of plastic from 1950 up until 2012. Over the past 60 years, we have seen a major shift in the use of one-off plastics, and education has been steady in informing people of the need to recycle. But is that the answer? Should industry and governments do more to limit the use of plastics altogether? In my lifetime, which at this point stands at 40 years, I have noticed a change from the days when items such as fruit were sold in paper bags to now being sold almost exclusively in plastic containers and I find it now difficult to remember pouring milk from a glass bottle. These days, it seems to come only in plastic bottles. It is harder for individuals to limit their personal use when the vast majority of companies choose to use plastic as their method of packaging. I am not going to go into major levels of detail, as there are people out there on this platform that are far better equipped to explain the science behind micro and nano plastics, and the way in which they enter the human body through the food we eat, the water we drink and the air we breathe. But I wanted to highlight the issues, as there will likely be many people in the future discussing the history of plastics and the things that we could have done but didn't do before it was too late.